We've just a week to go now before we're live on stage with the new show, Cocaine Cowboys. Final tickets on sale from mcd.ie, our venues. I think that the murder of Jason Buddha Molyneux was described at one point as a sort of feud within the fe- a feud. It was the sub feud of the Kinahan and Hutch feud. And it happened in January of 2018, really at around a time that there was hopes that the killing had quelled, that the, you know, the Guardian had got on top of a lot of the hit teams. But this week um, at his inquest, Jason Molyneux's mother, uh, Liz, told an absolutely horrific story of that night in question. Yeah, I mean, she described um, uh, holding her son's hand basically after he'd been shot. Um, Jason Munley was shot dead on, on in January 2018. As you said, the, the feud had begun to slow. But a, again, you heard in this inquest, the guards specifically connected with the murder of David Byrne as yeah. in the Hutch Kinahan feud. Um, but yes, his mother gave really shocking details about how minutes before he'd been shot, uh, Buddha had been sitting on the couch with her. Um, she'd been aware that he had some concerns for his safety. He had only just returned from the wake of his close friend, Derek Coakley Hutch. Um, and he obviously had a sense that he could be a target himself. Um, he then left the house to meet a friend and she had heard bangs and flashes, um, had, you know, left her home because he was shot just metres away um, and had actually seen the gunman flee the scene. She even described shouting at him, you dirty scumbag. And it then went over to her son and he was he was dying at that stage and she spoke to him and said, Jason, be strong. And yeah, like really harrowing evidence uh, from both Buddha's mother and his sister as well. And yeah, there was a few things going on at this point in time. His friend Derek Coakley Hutch had been shot dead outside Clover Hill Prison. Yeah. As he was tossing some drugs over the wall. Yeah. To some people inside. And he was targeted because his location, or so it's believed that his location at that point of that day was known. Yeah, I mean, Derek Ho- Coakley It was Hutch. an arrangement for the drugs to come over at a particular time, so he was double-crossed as such. Yes, I mean, Derek Coakley Hutch would have, you know, would have been anything but a major league criminal. Uh, he did have convictions. I think he had convictions for an armed robbery. But, you know, almost everybody would say about him that he was about as harmless as you could get in a general sense. But obviously he had that Hutch surname and um, he was, uh, you know, he was known to people. But Buddha Mullenew was his close personal friend. If you look back on Facebook, you can see uh, Derek Coakley, Hutch and Buddha Mullenew going back years, constant pictures on Facebook, really close friends. But Mother, Buddha Mullenew was a whole other ball game than Derek Coakley Hutch. He yeah. was probably one of the most uh, serious and dangerous criminals associated with the Hutch faction and um, had been very heavily involved in, in organised crime for since, since his teenage years and was a suspect in a number of murders. Um, he, despite his very young age, uh, probably at that stage, there was a belief after he was shot that the Kinahan cartel and their associates had really taken out one of the most dangerous people involved, uh, close to that faction. Even though we, I think it's fair to say he wasn't a central member of the Hutch organised crime group. He was, as we heard the Hutch group dis- described, he was one of these guys who come in and out and, and link up with them. But not, I think, in that sort of central planning unit, if you want. Um, but Mulnew was, uh, you know, he was, but he was definitely associated with them. And so the previous August 2017, there had been this botched assassination attempt on a known criminal called Derek Butler Devoy yeah. out in Ballymun. Yeah. And the two gunmen, I think, had arrived at a property and he was holding a baby. They had fired. He had essentially dropped the baby, yeah. ran for his life, scaled a wall and escaped. But at that time, his sister, Antoinette Corbally, mm-hmm. Devoy, 47-year-old, mother of five, and a 30-year-old called Clinton Shannon were shot dead, basically. Yeah. Both of them. And that murder, while it has, it's still actually only recently at the, well, certainly in the last year, the Dublin District Coroner's Court was told that the investigation into the deaths of those two people 
is ongoing. But at the time of his death, Jason Buddha Molyneux would have been a suspect in that. Yeah, very much the prime suspect. Um, yeah. And, he, you know, that was, again, these things are really complicated, but that was the culmination in that shooting was the culmination is in a series of events that had gone before where um, in 2014, Butler DeVoy's brother, uh, Mad Mickey DeVoy, as he was known, mm -hmm. was shot dead. And Jason Mullenew was also suspected of playing a role in that murder. Um, and this had developed into a long-term feud between Butler DeVoy, one of the most, Butler DeVoy's one very, very notorious criminal um, regarded as being a key or figure involved in the drug trade and organised crime trade in, in Ballymun. Um, he, his brother had obviously been killed, but Mullenew was a suspect in that or suspect in at least in having played in a role in that. And, you know, it is believed then that there was a series of events that led to Bullen Mullenew trying to take out Butler DeVore in 2017. He failed. Um, Butler Devoid escaped and in the crossfire, effectively, he killed two completely innocent people, uh, Antoinette uh, Corbally and, and Clinton, um, Clinton Shannon, who was, you know, absolutely no involvement in crime and just merely a friend of, of Antoinette's. So to make the situation even more complex, yeah. I hope people are following so far because so Derek Devoy's brother, Mad, Mad Mickey, Mickey, as he was called. Devoy, like, I mean, and that's right. not even a, a Sunday World nickname, if you want. That's what he was known as. Was murdered under the orders of a senior Kinahan figure. Yes. For, a, a, you know, so, I mean... Again, who was wrongly informed, I believe, that by his own crew, that he had been responsible for... The shooting of, of the non-fatal shooting of Greg Lynch when Greg Lynch was shot outside a pub in Cabra in the neck, Greg Lynch... Um, at that stage was a very much a key figure in in the Kinahan cartel's operations in, in Dublin, South Inner City. Um, Greg Lynch had already, you know, a young man at that stage had already served a very lengthy sentence for a huge haul of heroin. Um, he was certainly rising up the ladder at that stage and he was outside a pub in Cabra and was shot, um, shot in the face, basically, and very lucky to survive. In the immediate aftermath, the word went around underworld figures that it had been carried out by uh, Mad Mickey DeVoy. I think more than the word went yeah, around, I think what, what around. the word was put around. And, yes. and th this is kind of right, an insight into the kind of the double crosses and the way the Kinahan organisation were doing their business at that point, because they often did turn one individual and another in order for a result yeah. to happen. And I think Lynch was told directly that uh, Devoy was responsible for this shooting. Yeah. And obviously then subsequently Mickey Devoy was killed. Yes. Associates of Lynch would be suspected in the murder of, of Devoy. And, and uh, as part of that murder, a young man named Buddha Mulnew who wouldn't have been particularly had any particular gripe with the DeVoys. Remember, at this point in 2014, the Hutch and the Kinnan uh, operations are one. Yeah. I mean, they're not. They're, they're one not gang. Two, they're one gang. And this is why, it, you know, it's important to sort of stay focused on the story as yeah. it continues. So in the aftermath of DeVoys' murder, yeah. um, it sort of became, it appears to have become clear to Greg Lynch and the faction. Lynch kind of goes to ground after that. He's not as visible and he doesn't seem to be as in, shall we say, with the Kinahan organization. No. Especially as the feud starts, he just disappears off the scene completely. I think he realizes yeah. that he has been double crossed. Because the truth of really what happened to Greg Lynch was another senior figure in the Kinahan organization had taken against him. Yeah. And Many say it was over a woman. Yeah. It was as simple as that. And this individual had used that sort of Kinahan MO of the double cross in order to have Lynch killed. Yes. When Lynch wasn't killed, yeah. he then created a story yeah. which, you know, took any blame away from him or the Kinahan organization because it was a big problem when Lynch wasn't killed. Yeah. And that's when um, this senior Kinahan uh, figure blamed Devoy on it. Yes. And... As a result, Derek Devoy was hopping mad. His hopping. brother had been killed. I mean, Devoy, Derek Devoy is known as a very volatile criminal. He's one of these um, very much sort of maverick types yeah. who will often operate on his own. 
uh, if something needs to be done, he would often do it himself. Uh, even if he was stopped in a car, I don't think people knew how he was going to react because he was very impulsive. Yeah. Um, very dangerous character. Yeah, genuinely one of the more dangerous people in the city and also a senior criminal in his own right in that he was a target of cab. It took a lot of money off him. So, But he he very much ruled the roost in, in that area of Ballymun and people were absolutely terrified of him. And as the double cross continues into yet another double cross, Derek Devoy is informed who was responsible for the murder of his brother. So in this case, in a way, in gangland terms, it's kill or be killed between Derek Devoy and Buddha Molyneux. Yes. Um, which brings us to the house in Ballymun where Antoinette Corbally and Clinton Shannon lose their lives because that is suspected of being the moment that Buddha Molyneux made an attempt on Derek Devoy's life in order to save his own. Yes, effectively, that's exactly it. And remember, you know, ultimately... Um, it is believed that Butler Devoy was being at this point in the feud as the, you know, the, the Kenyans are getting the upper hand, but they're concerned about a number of key figures in the Hutch organisation, including Buddha Munni, who they believe are genuinely dangerous people. Butler Devoy is being hyped up by the by the Kinahan associates, being offered weapons, being offered support, being offered logistical support, and all that's the time. exactly by Bomber's outfit. And it's exactly and it's in other way for the Kinahan crew, you know, with Bomber at the helm of maybe some of the the murders that were carried out here, seeing an opportunity. Their hit teams had been taken down one by one. They had at that point you know, lost the Estonian hitman Imre Arrakis. They were in a lot of trouble. So they went around the back door yeah. and they tried to arm somebody else in order to take out one of their rivals, in order to up their own body count. Exactly. And the, when the murder of Buddha Mullinu, uh, occurred, and you can hear this, that from some of the evidence in, in the inquest uh, this week, you hear descriptions from um, from, the, from Buddha Mullinu's sister where she describes people whistling, um, you know, they describe seeing uh, a Renault van in the days before he was murdered. And you get a clear indication, I think it's even said, that there was a number of people involved. Uh, she describes believing the whistles were to, to give warning to the gunman, you know, to arrange it. So it's what it looks, what, you know, Gardy believe and are certainly continue to investigate is that a crew of of people who would have grown up with Buddha Mullinu in yeah. the north inner city who have been ultimately aligned with the Kinahan faction, but again, aren't part of the Kinahan gang in any meaningful way, um, that they were also hired and they also gave support to the, to the gunmen. And um, these guys, there's some of them have been arrested but not charged in connection with the Buddha Mullinu murder. But they're all from that local area. Yeah. They would have all grown up with them. They would have all grown up with the Hutches. Um, you know, a very, you know, a very, you know, much another double cross, I suppose. Yeah, literally when you dig down into it all, you can see those sort of problems that were, I suppose, reeled out at the beginning of the feud that all these people knew one another. They all knew where they lived. They knew each other's mothers. They knew each other's movements, their girlfriends, all the rest of it. And that was identified at the beginning of the hutch feud as an area that was going to cause the biggest problem. Yeah. Trying to police an area where you weren't only waiting for people or watching for people to come in, outsiders to come into yeah. an area. You had a problem within their, the own area of these sort of people taking sides and taking money. Yeah. But I mean, such a complex web there mm. uh, with all of that. Of course, Derek Butler Devoy is serving a 15 year sentence. He yeah. almost shot a guard while he was uh, wrestling around a bathroom, his bathroom. Uh, he unpinned a hand grenade around the floor of his bathroom in Ballymun and, um, he, you know, he he's serving a 15 year. That was terrifying. Terrifying. And I mean, he sort of seems to have lost the run of himself. And yeah, he, there was pictures of him going around bare chested, I think. And, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, he's serving a very lengthy. And the kind of a guy like you see those sort of really crazy characters, really dangerous characters, you know, mavericks as such. The sort of, I suppose, the likes of the Robbie Lawlers, um, others who are currently before the courts that we can't name, but we will once their their trials are finished, that have those personalities that are dangerous, but very useful yeah. within a feuding situation because they can be turned, they can be bought, uh, or they can just be encouraged to get involved and they will go and do it. This isn't somebody who's going to say, well, hang on, I need to consider my options here. Yeah. These are people who are hugely useful to gangs. 
And it, exactly. And you can see, of course, in Bomber Kavana, you know, who's, who's uh, you know, that was his modus operandi, wasn't it, as yeah. well? And you can even see it in the case he's facing now, where Bomber Kavana was a manipulative person. Yes. A dangerous person in his own right and a very organized criminal, but also very manipulative. And I mean, that's all going to be played out in court where, you know, he's effectively charged, he's charged with perverting the course of justice. And we're going to hear about how he, even in prison and even when he was convicted of drug trafficking offenses, according to the British police, he continued to try and manipulate, yeah. use other people and they're going to they are charged them in connection with trying to uh, manipulate this stash of guns in the north. And of I Ireland. suppose that's the mindset that gets you to the top. Yeah. Of you know, you need to be violent. You need to be lacking in empathy for others, etc. But you do need to be manipulative and sort of a a step above. I think really that is the way the Kinnahan organization got to where they got to. Yeah. Um, Daniel Kinnahan in particular seems to have you know, manipulated, made up stories, been very convincing. There's this, an element of a fraudster there in that personality, along with the other sort of business accolades you need to be the head of a cartel. But I mean, even Bomber Kavanagh himself was tricked by Daniel Kinahan. Yes. And of course, again, like not to really, really confuse matters, but like we talk about Greg Lynch, but the Greg Lynch is the, the core of his ultimate falling out with the, the Kinnahan cartel was the murder of his uncle, Jared Hatchett Kavanagh, which again was another double cross by Daniel Kinnahan, uh, another double cross involving Bomber Kavanagh. And, you know... And just to explain that, I mean, yeah. Daniel Hatchett Kavanagh was out working in Benna Medina. He was working with Bomber. Um, Daniel Kinnahan somehow managed to convince Bomber Kavanagh that Hatchett Kavanagh was plotting to kidnap one of his children yeah. and hold them for ransom for a million quid. And if you look on that, you know, in the cold light of day, how the hell would what, a million quid to those guys dealing drugs, yeah. should they make it much easier than yeah. the high risk of a kidnap? Uh, all that could go wrong there and the chances of getting caught are just so vast. But nonetheless, Kinahan did convince Bomber Kavanagh that that was going to happen because he wanted to remove Hatchet Kavanagh from the scene for whatever reasons. I've always thought he was simply jealous of him. I don't think he liked him. No. Um, there's all sorts of rumours yeah. about drug debts and all the rest of it that always go with things. But I think it was probably more simple than that. But Daniel Kinahan, in order to take out Hatchet Kavanagh, needed the sanction of Bomber and that's how he got it. And in the aftermath of Hatchet Kavanagh's death, Daniel Kinahan became a sort of prominent mourner and supporter of Hatchet Kavanagh's family, despite his his role in 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 his murder. So it's amazing uh, you have these series of double crosses, and you know it's it's. I mean, the real you couldn't trust anyone. You couldn't trust anyone, and of course the you know there's a number of tragic victims in the middle of that. I mean, uh, you know, Clinton Shannon, who was, I think, just an ordinary guy, no convictions, no involvement. Uh, you know, he 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 falls victim to yeah f falls victim to this. You know, so it's it's as was Antoinette Corbally Devoy. I mean, she was a sister. She was a mother of six. Yeah, and I think her eldest daughter witnessed her murder. Yeah, in that house that day. But uh, yeah, look, that's the kind of idea. I mean, I hope we've somewhat explained it. <laughs> yeah. uh, rather than confused everybody, you can keep rewinding, guys, <laughs> and just press play again if, if you've missed nope. bits. And in actual fact, you'd nearly need one of those, you know, investigators' pictures of everybody with the lines going through, Would. and you know. And of course, this happened as well with the the Crumlin Drimna feud. Um, as that went on, you know, it became uh, initially it started off the very core people were shooting at the the other very core people on the two sides. But as it went on, it became this kind of double crossing. Just yeah. have a word in your ear. I'll sort you out with a bit of drugs. I'll look after you. You do this, you know, and it, you know, it's a horrible, horrible way to live. It must be. I mean, I think the, the Buddha Munyu uh, family describing um, how he was spoken about being watched, was living in fear um, all that time before his, his run to his death. Like you have to wonder what sort of life these guys have. You, you know? do. And a lot of them, like, it's easy to say, why didn't they go away? But I mean, yeah. That's not the answer to everything. First of all, you, you would need to remove your whole family from yeah. the area. A lot of people don't have the facilities to just up and live in another country or the money. Yeah. Because yeah. you need quite a lot of assets, quite a lot of money, cash reserves to be able to do that for a period of time. Yeah. When is it ever safe to come back? I don't know. And I mean, of course, in, in Dublin, one of, you know, where 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 this occurred, um, 
you know, there was a load of, like we all, people t tend to think that's Hutch territory. Yeah. But there was a load of very senior Kinnahan figures who, who lived there and who had family there and who remained there, some of them to this day with that base. So people were really living right on top yeah, of each other within jail. cheek by jowl. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave that there for the moment. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.